Hi everyone, I'm Amir Taki and you know I was a Bitcoin developer since you know late 2010 and you know uh, worked on made the first UK Bitcoin exchange and Bitcoin conferences and uh, also did worked a lot on um, anonymous and cryptography engineering so did a lot of uh, anonymity research for crypto pioneering a lot of techniques like coin join and stealth addresses etc uh, but uh, these days now we're working on a project called uh, darkfi which is its own anonymous l1 for uh, anonymous smart contracts which uses many different contemporary cryptography technologies like uh, zero knowledge and multiply computations etc so the interesting thing about the time we live in now is we're undergoing a uh, renaissance in uh, cryptography research which is driven by the cryptocurrency industry which is uh, bringing a lot of new cryptography primitives to developers which has opened up or unlocked an entirely new design space of um, applications um, that we can create anonymous applications that previously wasn't possible so this so composing those cryptography primitives that uh, that field of study is new, and we call that anonymous engineering. At the same time, that's combined with all of the new uh, research that's happening on economics and the financial side in, in cryptocurrency as a whole, you know, with token engineering, which is, is very interesting, the concept of tokenization, which, where you can create protocols with certain kinds of incentives or disincentives that uh, allow, you to, allow you to provision uh, infrastructure for different services at scale. So um, those two concepts together are very, are very powerful in, in inside of crypto. So typically inside of crypto, um, you know, uh, uh, privacy coins like Monero and Zcash, etc., they've all underperformed massively compared to the rest of the market. And as we saw, like you know, uh, 2020 and 2021. There was, a, there was a very big hype cycle in which a lot of normies got into the market and there's a very pumpy narrative. And, you know, typically with those pumpy narratives, uh, people always talk about like regulations and, you know, the, what do you call it? Like uh, uh, mass adoption meme and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, in those kind of phases of the market, privacy coins uh, underperform. Not only that, a lot of the privacy coins have typically had very bad uh, incentive or, or economic en engineering underlying them. For example, Zcash have the founders fee. Uh, but we we kind of prophesize that now um, the the uh, the inflation uh, created by uh, uh, stable coins of uh, fiat assets, which is we we see as a as a big threat to the central banks to the Federal Reserve and European Central Bank, which is why in Europe now they're making these new Mika laws, trying to outlaw stable coins essentially, um, is causing the governments now to, uh, to the slow machinery of the state to try and uh, legislate or bring crypto under control. So uh, what that creates inside of crypto is for those pumpy narratives, um, it kind of shatters um, that that when people talk about you know uh, uh, being pro-regulation and regulators hit back it kind of shatters that narrative whereas for the side of crypto the hardcore extremist side which kind of says like oh you know they're not they're our enemy you know they're antagonist fundamentally with crypto it kind of reinforces our narrative the more that they push back the more we push back against them and it causes a feedback loop so as an example of a of an anti of a anti-fragile narrative so we kind of see that that process is starting to kick off this year. We're in the midst of a bear market, which is a perfect time for them to start, you know, with all this moralist, you see there's this moral crusade that's this, this being kind of um, uh, pushed in the media now. So um, that will kind of invigorate the whole kind of anonymity privacy narrative. So um, we kind of situate ourselves uh, uh, in, in that kind of, in the forefront of that. The, um, as I said, there were, there's these new technologies. So not only are we in a, in a unique time in terms of the market or the mindset of the narrative, but there are also these new technologies that we can leverage in terms of cryptography 
which enable us to create, um, uh, you know, new types of applications that, you know, before couldn't be envisioned. And we call that the dank net market, you know, the uh, DNM, which is, um, you know, you can have uh, uh, peer to peer decentralized marketplaces where people can sell any type of good completely uncensored. Um, uh, trading markets, markets for information. You can have uh, DAOs or, or democratically run uh, organizations. Uh, DAOs have been a very important uh, development in terms of cryptocurrency. A DAO is, um, it's first of all, a way to disperse liability because you know when when you have a centralized organization, then the state can mandate you to be legislated. But DAOs are a very powerful tactic. In which to, uh, in which there is the liability is dispersed, but not only that, DAOs have been a very effective means for a community of people to collectively pool capital and to direct that capital. Because in a marketplace, the power of your voice is proportional to how much kind of buying power you have or how much capital you're able to direct. So, enabling people to collectively pool capital and direct that capital means that they individually have more power in the marketplace. So, um, so a lot of these new anonymity techniques allow us to create anonymous DAOs or anonymous organizations on chain. So very, very interesting concepts in, in the realm of uh, uh, economics and, and, and politics with these new cryptography engineering. Um, so with DarkFi, uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take these very new cryptography primitives and which, which are, are very new, a lot of them very theoretical, but develop the abstractions that enable programmers who are not cryptographers or not hardcore uh, uh, math people who know about algebraic geometry and, and, and all that kind of stuff to... Uh, to compose these primitives and to build applications they envision. And, and so there's a lot of tooling that you know, need to be created. And because that tooling hasn't been created before, we have to kind of try and conceptualize it uh, from new. So there's an existing body of research about consensus protocols, peer-to-peer -peer networks, um, you know, token engineering, um, smart contracts, you know, how you design your virtual machine for smart contracts, the most popular virtual machine is the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, but uh, because we're now working with anonymous smart contracts, it fundamentally changed the model in, in new ways. So we have to, we're currently in the process of revisiting all of that existing research and like, and, and rebuilding it again, but with the assumptions of anonymity at the base of it. So last year we were just uh, a few very small people like starting the process now. Um, we have a much bigger community. Um, we're, uh, we're, our, our development team they're, they're, is very tight and, and very uh, competent, highly competent development team, probably one of the best in crypto. Um, and now we're expanding in terms of our, our cryptography research side. So um, we're, very, we're very much in, in, in the process. Right now we're in a bear market. So we've kind of consolidated all of our uh, all of our operations, and uh, so that we have enough runway to last at least two years, which is when we kind of think the boom, the bear market will exit. And so we're we're focused on the roadmap all the way until uh, the launch of the main net. And right now we have the dev net. We don't yet have the test net. We uh, developed. Uh, uh, our own because a lot of projects um, they uh, go to Discord and they use GitHub for their issues. Um, they lose that value. Um, so, but we didn't want to use these proprietary platforms, which is counter to our ideology or our philosophy. And also, you lose that value. That value gets captured by these proprietary centralized platforms. So, we made our own infrastructure, which is our own uh, peer-to-peer chat. Where, where our community can uh, talk together and, and discuss. Uh, also, it's also anonymous. And we also made our own uh, task system for coordinating the work of the developers. Um, we, we've also, um, we have our own uh, blockchain uh, where we can deploy applications. We have our own uh, anonymous smart contract language. Um, now we're finishing uh, anonymous, a demo of an anonymous DAO 
which you know people will be able to play around with. Um, and then after that, we're gonna we're start we're beginning the, we're gonna launch uh, anonymous swaps market for anonymous swaps, and then start working on more sophisticated types of marketplaces. Yeah, the Mioka blockchain days. It's very cozy, you know, very um, very philosophically aligned uh, crowd of people. That's very like idealistic and 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 driven. Um, yeah, I like the conference. It's a nice conference. It's like a very nice. Uh, focused community.